There was a time where Fox was the gold standard for broadcasting NASCAR. That's not the case anymore. Terrible production, a remote booth, Jamie Little, Michael Waltrip, and one of the most unimaginative schedules we've ever seen for the truck series, and Fox is doing everything in their power to destroy what was once one of NASCAR's most fun series to watch. After the 2022 season, when Vince Welch got the boot out of the booth, we thought we were going to get Adam Alexander for majority of the Truck Series races. Not the biggest and best upgrade we've ever seen, but certainly one that's better than what Vince was doing. Holding onto the wheel with his hands. I'll put the clip in right here so you can remember that. Ross Chastain is going to come around racing redemption at his hands. The wheel for Ross Chastain Hello, is bud. still and perfect, and he has Hail done Hail it, Hail winning nice at job, Gateway. Nice job. But instead, we got hoodwinked. Instead of getting Adam Alexander for most of the races, instead, we got Jamie Little. They hoodwinked us into this. And now we have Jamie Little calling races in the most mundane, boring voice ever possible. I, when people win races, I'm not even sure if the race is actually over. She'll just be like, Corey Heim, when's the race? Sick. Combine that with Phil Parsons, who can't see because the lights are too bright. Give the man some sunglasses or do something to help him out. Michael Waltrip, who continually seems more lost than anybody. He's just walking around in a cul-de-sac in his head with no idea how to get out because he's just saying things that make zero sense anymore. And they're doing this all remotely, which makes it even harder to watch because they're missing Rex. We're missing Rex because we're not seeing them. And then we all discover them at the same time, which feels kind of nice because it seems like we're all in this together. They're like, oh, there's a wreck. And we're also at the same time like, oh, there's a wreck. So that is kind of enjoyable in a really sad sense. But then they miss an entire portion of the wreck. They discover it and then they scream with excitement the same way I assume Columbus screamed when he saw land because it's just a brand new discovery. We've never seen this before. But if they were at the track and a car crashes on the front stretch in front of them, they're probably going to see it. Instead, we're all just left in the dark like they are until the camera somehow manages to span over and we're like, oh, hey, wreck there as well. So that part is really, really sad. Throw in the terrible production, which continually misses things left and right. I mean, they miss Jessica Friesen flipping over at Knoxville in 2021. How do you miss an entire truck flipping over? They manage to do it and all that we have are like these Zapruder film like videos of it and some still shots of her being upside down. No mention of it, no anything. Raceway, and we are under caution for the fourth time, as you saw there. Jessica Friesen in the 62 has herself up on that curb with quite a bit of damage in the front. Looks like, what is that a bumper bar there sticking out to the left That's side? What of it the looks truck? like. I'm not sure it's her bumper bar, but it's, <laughs> but it's a bumper bar. Unfortunate for Jessica Friesen. Let's check in with Heather. Fox is just truly terrible at their production side of things. Combine it with a booth that's not there, who has no idea what's going on in the garage area, they're not talking to people. Granted, their pit reporters are doing the best that they can, but it still is just not enough. And I know Artie Kempner over at Fox thinks his team's doing a great job, and honestly, like he has to do that, right? He has to carry the water, he has to support them, but you can't watch what you're seeing on the truck side of the production and be like, this is the best that we can do. Obviously, Fox is using a remote booth because they don't want to have to pay to have the booth go to the racetrack because, you know, a couple thousand dollars is just too much for the bottom line. They love to do companion events with, with NASCAR Cup and Xfinity because it cuts down on production costs, right? They don't have to set up new cameras. They don't have to run new wire, everything like that. NASCAR loves to do companion races as well because they don't have to spread out their, their staff to multiple different racetracks on every weekend. And the Truck Series schedule for 2024 is one of the saddest that we've ever seen. There's only two standalone events, Milwaukee and IRP. And calling IRP a standalone is kind of funny because Cup and Xfinity are just seven miles away over at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There's only one road course on the schedule at Coda, which is probably one of the worst road courses for the Truck Series, if we're being completely honest. And there's going to be three races that start at 5 p.m. on a Friday in 2024. You talk about a time to get the lowest ratings possible. 5 p.m. on a Friday is probably worse than starting it at 7 p.m. on a Saturday. So there's, there's that. And that tells me that Fox truly does not care about the truck series anymore because having a race start at that time when people are one on their way home from work if you have to commute to a job two it's a friday night at five o'clock if people are going out they're not paying attention to the truck series 
Three, if you live on the West Coast, that's a 2 p.m. start time in the afternoon. Uh, gonna have to like, what, block out my calendar to make sure that I can watch these races? It makes no sense. And it's just, it just tells you everything you need to know about how Fox cares about the NASCAR truck series schedule. From their booth being one of the worst that you could ever assemble, it's the reverse of the Avengers. I don't know what the opposite of the Avengers is, but it's this Fox booth because there's not a redeeming quality in any of their broadcasting skills. But hey, at least in 2024, we're getting back the second Martinsville date, which is always a plus, <laughs> which is the trucks at least put on a good show there more often than not. Uh, but is it really worth how much we've had to give up in terms of what else we want from Fox? Listen, I don't think that all 23 races on the truck series schedule need to be at short tracks across the country, uh, standalone events, nothing like that. But I do think you should mix in a pretty decent you know, variety of, of different types of tracks. And going to some smaller tracks is what the truck series was built on. Mesa Marin, they went to Mansfield, they went to Evergreen, they went to tracks that were small, local grassroots racing. And that's what they should be doing still. They should still be going to a Stafford, a South Boston, uh, a Hickory, wherever. I don't care where they go. They just need to go to places that aren't just Las Vegas twice a year or, or Kansas or Texas. They should still go to intermediates, mile and a half, absolutely, because part of the truck series is to teach these kids how to race on as they climb the ladder. So racing on bigger tracks is important. But the truck series at Pocono absolutely does not need to happen. There's no reason the trucks should ever be at Pocono. They should never have gone to Pocono. They should be instead racing at a short track. In the, go to South Boston instead that weekend. It doesn't matter. Go to any short track. When NASCAR heads out to the West Coast, when the trucks go out to Las Vegas, they should also just do a race the next weekend at Kern County and then come back east or something along those lines. It doesn't matter what short tracks we're going to, but start to go to some different variety of racetracks. Don't go to Coda. The trucks at Coda don't make any sense. It looks bad. It's not a good race. Instead, go to your mid-Ohio. Go to PIR. Do Portland International, not Phoenix International. Go to a racetrack uh, and a road course that doesn't typically get NASCAR. I mean, that's what made most sports so great when the truck series went up there. Uh, running at Barber and at Alabama seems like it might be a little bit too tight. And obviously, Talladega is in Alabama, so we're not going to get into that. But there's plenty of other places that the truck series could go that aren't Coda. So having said all of that, I don't have much hope for the truck series in the future in terms of scheduling or in production. We don't know what's happening with the truck series TV deal going forward 2025 and beyond. Hopefully it doesn't stay on Fox. Hopefully it goes to somebody that wants to put some actual production behind it. But I think like everybody else, I'm not holding my breath. So it's a bummer to see what Fox has done. Hopefully things change in the future, but just know that 2024 is going to be much like 2023, if not worse. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.